So today, we have an article from The Atlantic. Let's jump right in and see what it's about. Why does Trump still refuse to criticize Putin? Well, I don't know, David Graham Cracker. Why should he? Trump has attacked 351 separate people, places, and things on Twitter alone since July 2015. Yeah, because he doesn't take it, like others did. The president has demonstrated that tendency this week with his escalating, improvised threats against North Korea and his parallel assault on Mitch McConnell, his most important ally in Washington. Oh, where do I begin? The obvious bias in stating his threats against North Korea were improvised? Or Mr. Graham Cracker's delusion that Mitch McConnell is Trump's most important ally? On July 30, Putin announced that Russia was forcing the United States State Department to reduce its staff in Russia by 755 people. Trump who often can't let a provocation on cable news go unanswered for more than a few hours, was uncharacteristically quiet. He finally broke his silence after a fashion on August 3, the day he signed a bill increasing sanctions on Russia in retaliation for interfering with the 2016 election. Wait, so his breaking his silence with the Russia diplomatic firings takes the form of passing sanctions that themselves were in retaliation for something completely different? Trump had opposed the legislation, but it passed Congress with veto-proof majorities, leaving him little choice but to sign it. Oh, 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 he didn't break his silence at all. Only five Congress people voted against it. Five! Veto-proof majority if I've ever seen one. What would it have looked like if Trump vetoed it? Congress forced him to sign the bill, even though he clearly didn't want to. You know, the bill that the Senate would have to pass, that Trump's most important ally, Turtle McConnell, is the majority leader of. It's almost like Turtle McConnell is not Trump's ally? Russia tampering with the election. Not alleged tampering, not questions about tampering, nope, tampering with the election. Definitely, positively, undoubtedly, unquestionably, certainly tampered. Doesn't even explain what tampering means. <laughs> Great journalism, Atlantic. Trump chose to place blame for the rocky state of the relationship, not on any of those issues, and certainly not on Putin, but squarely on Congress. Read that tweet. Read it. Trump gets it. Congress is not helping de-escalate tensions against this nuclear power. His comments were surprising. Not only did he not criticize Putin, but he thanked him. Trump turns negatives into a positive. In this case, Russia is helping drain the swamp. Although he had been briefed before November 8th, it was after the election that he began getting full intelligence briefings on Russian interference. Since then, there has also been an increasing focus on interference among members of the public, press, and Congress. In other words, Trump has had many more incentives to distance himself from Russia. Instead, he's continued to hold his fire. I know this is crazy. <laughs> Black helicopter tinfoil hat stuff. But hear me out. What if Russia did not interfere with the election? <sighs> Look, if interference into a foreign country's democratic process is so bad, then why don't we talk about when Barack Obama's State Department sent 350000 of taxpayer money to support Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's opponent in their 2015 prime ministerial election. He has also repeatedly declined to accept the idea that Russia meddled in the election, even though it is the conclusion of all the major intelligence agencies, and even though many of his top aides have said they blame Russia for hacking attacks in June, he called the attacks a big damn hoax. Until I see otherwise, it is a big damn hoax. Even so, all the major intelligence agencies is a lie. And of course, my direct official knowledge of, of any of this stopped on 20 January when my term of office was happily over. 
As you know, the IC was a coordinated product from three agencies, CIA, NSA, and the FBI, not all 17 components of the intelligence community, those three, under the aegis of my former office. Following extensive intelligence reporting about many Russian efforts to collect on and influence the outcome of the presidential election, President Obama asked us to do this in early December and have it completed before the end of his term. The two dozen or so analysts for this task were hand-picked, seasoned experts from each of the contributing agencies. They were given complete, unfettered, mutual access to all sensitive raw intelligence data and, importantly, complete independence to reach their findings. They found that the Russian government pursued a multifaceted influence campaign in the run-up to the election, including aggressive use of cyber capabilities. Clapper goes on to say that they hacked both parties' servers, even though no evidence of this has been provided or since. He claims that the information was forwarded to WikiLeaks, whom repeatedly denied Russian involvement. Either way, Clapper, who would have some credibility in this regard, clearly contradicts the claim that all 17 intelligence agencies made that assessment. I mean, he said only three did. Given that Trump had already said he was dubious of Russian interference, that tweet reads as an acknowledgement that he accepted their denial. But even if that wasn't the case, Trump's next one made it clear he had no interest in holding Russia to account. Holding Russia to account for what? There is no evidence, Mr. Graham Cracker. You said it yourself. Trump attacked 351 nouns since July 2015. Why would he refrain unless he had a good reason? The question why Trump has worked so hard to avoid criticizing Putin. Occam's razor, Mr. Graham Cracker. The simplest solution is usually the right one. And if he acknowledges Russia interference in the election, it undermines the legitimacy of his victory in 2016. This is all this Mo Russia conspiracy theory comes down to. Your butt hurt over the defeat of the anointed one. It had nothing to do with the fact that the Democrat Party ran a shrill, out-of-touch, corruptocrat Harridan as its candidate who's so nasty her bodyguards hate working for her. It's always someone else's fault. Never change, mainstream media. Never change. In fact, his actions are making him look weak, but not in the way that he thinks. <laughs> like, we care what you think. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care anymore. Most of the government and the fake news industry wants to escalate tensions with Russia if the overwhelming support for the Russia sanctions bill, now law, from Congress, and this article is any indication. Why would they want to do this? I can only speculate. But Trump is the only sane man in this situation. Escalating tensions with a nuclear power based on allegations with no evidence is not in the U.S.'s best interests. He clearly wants to reconcile, but fake news and their political allies won't let him. Look, don't be a passive observer of this. Wherever you hear people entertaining this Russia narrative, friends, family, co-workers, challenge them, ask them for proof. Where and when did Russia interfere with the election? How did they interfere? Get yourself educated. And don't let this nonsense go unchallenged. Questions, comments, critique? Put them in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe to make your official declaration of heresy.